story appears ordinary until you see the core side of it. And what you're looking for is a story behind the news. We bring it to you from Lagos, the commercial capital of Nigeria. Giving you all sides and political stories round the clock. Every detail from the start line to the final whistle. Core TV News, expanding your view. Hello and welcome to Core TV Primetime News. I am Nifemi Ogunsoye. In our major stars, Frontline businessman is an Islamic religious leader, Abdulaziz Arishikola Halao, dies at the age of 69. Also in this program, Nigeria police announced plans to close all borders in Ekita State by 6 p.m. on Thursday ahead of weekend governorship hall. APC raises a lamb over alleged plot by PDP to rig Saturday's AKT governorship election. And outside Nigeria, British Prime Minister David Cameron vows to fight to the bitter end to stop John Claude Juncker becoming the next head of the European Commission. And in business news tonight. New taxation law in United States of America sends shock waves to Nigerian banks and businesses. And in sports, Netherlands beat Australia to go top of Group B at the outgoing FIFA World Cup. Welcome once again, and now the details. Prominent businessman and Islamic leader Abdulaziz Arisha Kolalo has passed on at the age of 69. The eldest daughter of the deceased Khadija confirmed the death of Alao, who is the Deputy President General of the Nigeria Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs and the Arab Muslimi of Yoruba land. Co TV News gathered that Alao died in his London home, where he had been since last week Thursday. The Deputy President of the Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs in Nigeria did not show any sign of ill health, although he was said to have embarked on the journey on medical grounds. President General SCIA and Sultan of Sokoto Sahad Abubakar was said to have flown to London and due to return with Irish Ecola's cops for barrier on Thursday. Some of the early callers at the house included the Oyo State Governor Abiola Jimobi and his wife Florence, head of service in the state Tajuddin Aremo, chairman of First Bank Ajibola Fondia, TV Mam of Ibadan Sheikh Suara Haruna, among other sympathizers and government officials. Ajimobi described the death of Alao as tragic, disheartening, and a big blow to the entire nation. The Nigeria police have expressed readiness to ensure the safety of lives and property during and after the election. The Inspector General of Police, Mohammed Abubakar, while speaking in Adoikiti, ahead Saturday governorship board in the state, wants troublemakers to stay clear of Ekiti. He reveals that the state borders will be closed at 6 p.m. on Thursday. Rashid Rashid has more in this report. First time visitors to Adoikiti and every other part of the state are likely to feel they are in a war zone. The whole of Ado Metropolis and Ikiti indeed are filled with heavy presence of policemen and soldiers, including their warlike hardware. Beyond this, the Inspector General of Police hinted that the police will not take it lightly with anyone ready to foment trouble. All troublemakers that were prepared for this election and we shall not and will not tolerate anybody no matter how highly placed that individual think he is, that will come here and post up. If you do so, you meet the consequences of your action. While announcing the closure of all borders in the state by 16.00 hours Thursday, the Inspector General warns those who has nothing to do in equity to leave or face the music. Today is Wednesday, and we are three days to this election. If you are not from the state and you have nothing to do this election, I want to warn, today should 
will be last day in this state. If by tomorrow, 1600 hours, 6 p.m., we find you here, we shall get you arrested. He also confirmed the arrest of some people with already thumb-printed ballot boxes in the state and dismissed the prayer of the APC chairman in AKT on the development. So we have to allow them to conclude that investigation first. We cannot compare that investigation. They must do their job in accordance with the law. They cannot tell you anything until they finish that. Abu Bakr again reminded the police on the need to be civil with the electorates. Do not expect any security agent to misbehave to anybody. We expect them to respect every citizen of the state. And if they do otherwise, we have monitors who will take them up and will be sanctioned. As it is, the stage, according to the police, is now set for the conduct of the Saturday election. Rashid Rashid, Core TV News, Adoekiti. Meanwhile, the June 21 governorship poll in AKT again stares the harness nest, this time popular Lagos based lawyer Bamdeli Aturu, who has been speaking on the security arrangement put in place for this weekend poll, says the heavy security presently in place in AKT is enough to scare away many voters. Um, Military um, uh, uh, mentality still holds way. We still think that unless we uh, flood the place with soldiers, flood the place with policemen, uh, there is no security, and that is the tragedy of our situation. Because you can do the AKT election without creating this frenzy, this excitement, you know, this panic. Now you are going to scare away some of the voters. I mean, there are people who say, "Look, at my age, maybe I'm 70 years or 80 years." Why should I go and kill you up when somebody can uh, just kill you accidentally? So I, I, I think that we need to go back to the drawing board and, and train our law enforcement agents. Do watch out for more on a tour in our weekly news program, Judiciary Today. It's still in negative where the June 21 governorship poll has received the standing orders of the various stakeholders in the election. Speaking at the INEX Stakeholders Forum in Adwikiti, Chairman of the Commission, Atahiru Jaga, reviews the security features embedded in various ballot materials to ensure credibility of the election. Rashid Rashid was there. The stakeholders meeting, which attracted top Kellyans of INEC officials, security agencies, political parties and their candidates were said to be imperative in order to display the level of INEX preparedness at conducting a credible election. The commission in the Kitty State remains steadfast and committed to the guiding principles of INEC, which among others include transparency, fairness, equality and integrity, and has assured of its readiness a level playing field for all the political parties and candidates during the government's report. INEX National Commissioner in charge of Ekiti State, Lai Olurode, is counting on the cooperation of political parties for the success of the election. You can choose on your own to elect their election fiasco, to let the election go under. We cannot, the security agents cannot do more than what they are doing. We have been contemplating when do we distribute the election material. Should we do it uh, two days, three days to the election? And we are afraid what will happen to those materials, not by INEC officials, but by other players in, in the game. Expressing direct shift from previous elections, Chairman of INEC, Atahi Rujaga, highlighted the security features in the various voting materials made to forestall Reagan. We have customized panels papers such that ballot papers from one local government to another have different colors. We have customized even the result sheets. There are unique result sheets for each polling unit for this election. So you cannot move result sheets across polling units because if you do that, it will be detected and it will be dealt with. 
All the ballot boxes are serially numbered. For his part, Inspector General of Police Mohammed Abubakar wants politicians to act only within the ambit of the law on election day. You cast your vote and you are free to go back to your house. You cannot take any government behavior of whatever kind and say, I am going for supervision. You have nothing to supervise. That day, you are not for supervision. Allow INEC to do its job. Is it not so? Yes. With these developments, all eyes are now focused on AKT as the D-Day draws close. Rashid Rashid, or TV News, Ado AKT. Nigeria's largest opposition party, the All Progressives Congress, say it won't accept the outcome of this weekend's governorship election in Ekiti State if the process is not transparent. This was the message the new party chairman, John Odigo Yego, passed across shortly after the inauguration of the APC's new national executive in Abuja. The party leader noted that series of events in the last 72 hours are pointers to the desperation of the People's Democratic Party to to rig the election at all cost. It's only a few days after the APC's inaugural convention and APC members are back in Abuja. This time it's for the inauguration of the party's new national executives and just like their last gathering party supporters came in droves. There had been suggestions that some of the newly elected party executives had been dropped but convention chairman was quick to clear the air on this. We will concentrate upon women leader in the northeast and an ex official in the mayor rumor going on. I'm not aware of it. That is not my notice. So please take that as mayor rumor and just wake us at time. This paved way for the inauguration of the team and afterwards, new party chairman delivered APC's position on events of the last 72 hours in Ekiti State. And Tuesday, June 17, two loaded aircraft load the latter at a Kure airport with undisclosed content. What has made this even more suspicious and ominous in the presence of the Minister of State Defense? He also left no one in doubt about how the party will take it if the process is eventually compromised. And for the APC chairman, the earlier President Jonathan takes action, the better. But with your cooperation, we are going to work night and day. We are going to toil night and day to fulfill the promise of the APC. To underline APC's party's readiness to checkmate what it insists is PDP's rigging agenda, the new party chairman has decided to relocate to Ekiti State. John Odigo Yogun accepts that it is his first real challenge as party chairman, and he is convinced he will start his tenure on a good note by leading APC to victory in Ekiti State. The Federal High Court in Abuja has adjourned the trial of Ikita State Commissioner for Integration and Intergovernment Affairs, Fumini Afuya, to June 19. The Commissioner and 11 others are facing a three-count terrorism charge brought against them by the Inspector General of Police. The police, however, failed to produce the accused persons in court, forcing the presiding judge, Justice Evok Chuku, to adjourn the case. The defense counsel, Femi Falano, was also concerned that the accused person were not brought to court. I believe we are operating under the rule of law. And like his lordship said, nobody is above the law. If you get a hearing notice from the court, served on the appropriate police authorities, I'm very confident that they will be represented. Reaction to the Ekita State Government through the Attorney General and Commissioner for Justice Wali Fakwonda has described the charge against the Commissioner and the 11 others as unwarranted and reckless, reckless desecration of the Nigeria Terrorism Prevention Act of 2013.
Though the charged suspects, including the current Commissioner for Integration and Intergovernmental Affairs, have been granted bail, Wali Fakonda says the federal government is using the terror charge to which hunt opposition and calls on the federal government to redress the situation. Moving on now, the All Progressive Congress insists that there is no controversy over the age of its national youth leader. Party spokesman Lai Mohammed says journalists in Abuja that Ibrahim Jello is 43 years, not 52 as widely speculated. He also maintained that Jello's emergence was not contrary to APC's constitution. One, the youth leader was born on the 13th of April 1971. And we challenge anybody who has a contrary information to come forward. All we've had uh, is that he contested for House of Reps in 2011, and there he claimed with 49. The father of Jalo is alive. The birth certificate, we have it. Two, after the time Jalo went for screening, there was no age limit as to who can be youth leader in our party. Amendment was made on the floor of the of the convention, convention after which he had been screened and he had been cleared to contest. Now there are two schools of thought. Would an amendment that took place at the eve of on the night of convention is it for future you know, elections or for present one? And this issue that I believe we are going to sort out. Former pioneer member of the All Progressives Congress, Tom Kimi, has attributed his problems with the party to the tyrannical approach to leadership of Bola Tinubu, whom he said threatened fire and brimstone if the former Edo State Governor, John Odigo Yego, did not emerge as the APC National Chairman. Describing the power, the former governor of Lagos State Woods and the APC, Ikimi says Timibu operated as the core of one of the caucuses whose membership varied from time to time within the realms of his whims and caprices. Ikimi, a former foreign affairs minister, accused Tinubu of turning the opposition party into a private property and that some stalwarts of the APC were willing to accede to his whims, which eventually turned the party's convention last week to a charade. Ikimi added that the party's governors colluded with Tinubu to concrete democratic process at the last convention. Federal government drops corruption charge against Mohammed Abacha. Details after this timeout. Don't go away. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Ghana. Please remain seated and ensure your seatbelts are fastened. You can now turn on your MTN mobile phone data to enjoy a browsing rate of 5 koba per kilobyte with MTN One World. Thank you. Absolutely. Browse like home with MTN One World. Surfing the web from any MTN operating country costs the same like home. Enjoy affordable rates when you call and send text messages. Terms and conditions apply. MTN. Everywhere you go. This one wash challenge will test Ariel to see if it removes stains in one wash. Let the challenge begin. First, chocolate. And juice. We will wash shirts with Ariel. Look, Ariel has cleaned in just one wash. So which detergent removes stains in one wash? Ariel. PNG Everyday Quality Brand. Come June 21, it will be decision day for the people of Ekiti. 18 candidates on gunning for one seat. I am the next governor of Ekiti. But the people will have the final say. I know that tolerance has a very big place. Join extensive coverage of the election and get up to the many details as development unfold. I'm the voice of the people. With expert analysis from the best political team on television. And that's honesty of Ireland. Without... Join us all day June 21 to find out who emerges the next governor of the Kitty State. We have agreed to move this state forward. Keep a date with us on Court in the News. You can also watch us live on our website on www.courttvnews.com at 24 hour news station. 
Koro TV News now provide a platform for live coverage of political rallies and electioneering campaign from anywhere in Nigeria. Political news stories, political editorial reviews, political discussions, personality profile, people's parliaments from the national, state and local government assembly. Contact us now on 0803-471-8550 or 0803-724-9733. 0145334407 at 24 hour news station glad to have you back the federal government has withdrawn corruption charges instituted against mohammed abu uh, abacha son of the late head of state general sonia abacha attorney general of the federation mohammed adoke withdrew the 446.3 billion naira theft charge which were initially filed in february 2014. the prosecution had accused abacha of unlawfully receiving the fund that was allegedly stolen from government's coffers between 1995 and 1998. Adoke Okay, acting for the federal government asked Justice Mavan Kolo of the Abuja High Court to strike out the case on the grounds that fresh facts have emerged on the matter. Private prosecuting counsel Dan and Ewelum informed the court of Adoke's instruction and Justice Kolo subsequently struck out the charges. The federal government says the country overshot its investment projection by over 100 percent between 2010 and 2013. Information Minister Labyrinth Marco told State House correspondents after his week's Federal Executive Council meeting that investment inflow in the three-year period exceeded 28 trillion naira. Marco also revealed that the meeting was devoted to a review of the first national implementation plan for Vision 2020. We proposed or targeted that we needed 13 trillion Naira investment by the private sector to be able to reach our goals in the first plan. But the initial report we saw today was that the private sector actually invested over 28 trillion in the economy um, in, in the period between 2010 and 2013, which was over 100 percent above the initial target. United States tax law causes panic in Nigeria. Find out why when we return for business news with Sabene Soko shortly after this break. Don't go away. This one wash challenge you test Ariel to see if it removes stains in one wash. Let the challenge begin. First, chocolate. And juice. We will wash shirts with Ariel. Look, Ariel has cooled in just one wash. So which detergent removes stains in one wash? Ariel, PNG Everyday Quality Brand. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Ghana. Please remain seated and ensure your seat belts are fastened. You can now turn on your MTN mobile phone data to enjoy a browsing rate of 5 koba per kilobyte with MTN One World. Thank you. Absolutely. Browse like home with MTN One World. Surfing the web from any MTN operating country costs the same like home. Enjoy affordable rates when you call and send text messages. Terms and conditions apply. MTN. Everywhere you go. Come June 21, it will be decision day for the people of Ekiti. 18 candidates are gunning for one seat. I am the next governor of Ekiti. But the people will have the final say. I know that tolerance has a very big place. Join extensive coverage of the election and get up to the many details as development unfold. I'm the voice of Ekiti people. With expert analysis from the best political team on television. And that's honesty of island. Without Join us all day June 21 to find out who emerges the next governor of the Kitty State. We have agreed to move this state forward. Keep a date with us and call TV News. You can also watch us live on our website on www.calltvnews.com at 24 hour news station. Call TV News presents a platform with presence in over 30 states of the Federation. The show to be had. For live coverage of events, we have the capacity to deliver from anywhere in Nigeria and beyond. Contact us now on 0803-471-8550 or 
0803-724-9733-014-533-407 Our 24 hour news station Hello there, you're welcome to the world of business with me, Sabena Izoku. The banks and businesses in Nigeria are ruminating on how to respond to a new law on taxation by the United States of America of, um, aimed at plugging revenue loopholes. The new law known as the Foreign Accounts Tax Compliance Act, FATCA, requires citizens of the United States, including individuals who live outside the space, to report their financial accounts held outside the United States. The law also requires foreign financial institutions to report an internal revenue service about their U.S. clients, the U.S. citizens who own businesses or work in Nigeria, as well as Nigerians who are behind businesses situated in the United States, are targets in this move by the U.S. government. However, the major concern of banks and businesses in Nigeria is the non-existence of an intergovernmental agreement between the country and the United States Treasury Department on Foreign Account Tax Compliance Act. The Director of Federal Inland Revenue Service, Samuel Ogunbeson, acknowledged that the task of complying with the FATCA provision is worthwhile, adding that the Federal Inland Revenue Service is ready to support banks. The Central Bank of Nigeria, again in the process of blacklisting bad banks, borrowers. The Central Bank of Nigeria, Governor Godwin Mefiole, is determined to go hard on habitual bank debtors by making it difficult for them to access credit anyway in the system. This is one of the key highlights of the bankers' committee meeting held in Abuja, where Mefiole equally reminded bank executives of a zero-tolerance stance on infractions and his plans to intensify banking supervision. Briefing on the outcome of the meeting, the Central Bank of Nigeria Director, Banking Supervision Tukumbo Martin says, Amefiele's passion for these two issues will help the nation's financial stability. Eight commercial banks contributed 53.52 billion naira to the Asset Management Corporation of Nigeria Income and Banking Sector Resolution cost funds in 2013 financial year. The Central Bank of Nigeria and the bank in 2011 signed a memorandum of understanding for the establishment of the fund. The idea here of the sinking fund was to assist Ankem to meet its goals and also ensure that the government will not bear the cost of financial crisis in future. Speaking on the Ankem levy, President Independent Shareholders of Nigeria, Boniface Okezia, says the levy robbed shareholders of the investments. He attributed the non-payment of dividends by some banks and the poor profile of some of the banks to the fraudulent income level. Nigeria and the law enforcement agencies are being blamed for the increasing dirty Naira notes in circulation across Nigeria. An economist at the Millennium Development Goals MDGS offers in Oshu, Olu Damilare Rotibi, apportioned the blame in an interview with journalists in Oshubu. According to him, the dirty nature of most currencies in circulation showcased Nigerians as people who are not sensitive to national symbols and heritage. He also implored governments at all levels to intensify the campaign against poor handling of currency notes to reduce the money spent on printing them yearly and also called for strict penalty for offenders. Minister for Information Labaro Maku says more than 28 trillion naira private sector investment has flowed into the nation's economy between 2010 and 2013. The minister made this known at the meeting held at the council chambers of presidential villa Abuja. He says the figure represents more than 100 percent increase above the 13 trillion naira private sector investment that initially targeted by the federal government in 2010, which shows that the country moved from the 30th position on the global economy in 2010 to the 26th spot in 2013. According to him, the report shows the Nigerian economy is growing by leaps and bounds with constant investments in flows in spite of security challenges in the north. He said macroeconomic policies of government are working and that the idea here of bringing down inflation is to stabilize economic growth and bring down interest rates. And on the stock market report, it ended on a bullish note today as the Nigerian Stock Exchange uh, closed on a positive note with 41,171.16 basis uh, point and to appreciate by 0.09%. 
The market capitalization rose by 0.09% to close at 13.59 trillion naira. Investors exchanged 296 million order shares worth 5.43 billion naira in 6,335 deals. Nestle PLC led the gainers chart, followed by MRS, Simcan Valve PLC, Nigerian Brewers PLC, and Owendo PLC, respectively. While Con Oil PLC topped the losers table, followed by Mobile PLC, Dangote Cement PLC, Presco PLC, and Garrity Transback PLC. And here are the top five trades. <clears throat> And these, and this is the business news for tonight. Coming up next is Sport News with Branson Wenner, who is going to give us all the details in business news. Stay with us. Thanks for joining us on Sport News tonight. I am Brownson Wana. The Director General of the National Sport Commission, Benga Elegbele, has assured that the Super Eagles will bounce back in the next World Cup game against Bosnia. Nigeria were forced to a goalless draw by Iran in their first game of the tournament played at the Arena da Bazila in Cotiba, Brazil. Though the sport administrator was not impressed with the team's performance against Iran, he believes the Eagles who spring up surprise in the next match by, beat, by beating Bosnia and Zagovina to, be, to brighten their qualification chances. Nigeria will face Bosnia and Zagovina on Saturday in a must-win game. And of course, I'm still on the World Cup. Memphis Depay scored the winner at, uh, as Holland beats as Holland made it two wins in a row to claim top of the table. Ajahn Robin raised clear and angered in a shot to put the Dutch ahead. But with a minute, Tim Cahill equalized with a stunning left foot volley. Mike Dejenka slotted in the penalty for Australia before Robin Van Persie lashed in a strike for Netherlands. Matthew Leckes missed a chance for the, for the scorers and was punished on 25 minutes when Netherlands got the winning goal. And of course, now to the international friendly where head coach of the Nigerian national under 20 women team, the Falconet, Peter Dedevo, is confident that the team is ready to take on their Ghanaian counterpart in a return leg international friendly. The Ghanaian are expected in Abuja on 18th June 2014 for a two sets friendly. The two match comes up on Friday 19th and Sunday 22nd at the FIFA Go project package of the Abuja National Stadium by 3 p.m. Dedevo says four players from Super Falcons have joined the team, thus making it more formidable. The players are Asisat Oshola, Yetunde Adeboye, Adeboye Jo, Miriam Ibrahim and Chinedu Veronica. And now to the EPL Premier League champions, Manchester City will start their 2014 Premier League campaign at Newcastle on the weekend of 16th of August. Arsenal will play host to Crystal Palace, Burnley will host Chelsea, while Everton will travel to newcomers Leicester City. Liverpool will welcome Southampton, Manchester United will play host to Swansea City, while Queen's Park Rangers will play host to Hall City. Stoke City will take on Aston Villa, while Sunderland will travel to West Bromwich Albion, of course, while Tottenham will begin their opening game against West Ham United. And finally on Sport News tonight, the world of tennis defending champion and the Murray has been seeded third at Wimbledon, a rise of two places from his world rankings of fifth. Murray, who ended Britain's 77 years, wait for a male single champions, championship last year, has benefited from Wimbledon's unique seedings formula. It means the Scots cannot meet Novak Djokovic, Rafael Nadal or Roger Federer before the semi-finals. The women's event adhered to the world rankings, leaving Serena Williams at the top seed ahead of Lina, Simona Halep, Agnes Karadwaska, and French Open champions Maria Sharapova. 
and of course some um, very shocking uh, defending champions Spain's are uh, out of the World Cup Nifemi it's really funny uh, I'm sure we are expecting to see more upsets as the World Cup progresses my name is Brown Sinwana that's Sport News tonight every day every hour and every minute news break in Nigeria things happen so fast it's most times difficult to track and comprehend them but that's what we do right here on DJ360. 2015, would you want to come back again? It's like asking Jesus Christ if he knew he was going to die, will you, come, will you want to come back as the savior of the world? Again? We do not just help you track the stories, we we'll break them down, explore all the angles, analyze the issues so that you can fully comprehend the stories and use them to make the right decisions. Thanks, Browson. Indeed, how are the mighty fallen? We only can hope that the Super Eagles of Nigeria will do us proud in their next match. Thanks for being there. For more information on our news and other programs, you can visit us on our Facebook page. It's facebook.com forward slash TV News. You can also follow us on our Twitter handle at TV News NG, as well as on YouTube. It's youtube.com forward slash TV Live a space and news. Outside Nigeria now, British Prime Minister David Cameron has vowed to fight to the bitter end to stop Jean-Claude Juncker becoming the next head of the European Commission. Juncker is the candidate backed by the European People's Party, the largest group in the European Parliament, as well as by German Chancellor Angela Merkel. Cameron strongly opposes his candidacy, saying he is a federalist who will not adopt the reforms that London says are indeed uh, needed to put the 28-member bloc back on track. Cameron's words were the latest charge in his lengthy battle to stop Juncker from taking the job. Look, there's an important principle at stake here which is that the accountable elected members of the European Council, the elected heads of state, elected heads of government, should be the ones who propose who runs the European Commission. It's a very important principle, and I will go on uh, putting forward that principle and opposing this process of having someone put on us uh, by the European Parliament through a uh, fairly strange set of elections. I'll go on opposing that, right up to the end. There is absolutely no question of changing my view about that. Now, in many ways, the question is not for me. I've made clear my view. I think Europe needs reform, but I don't think it needs a effective change in the way Europe works to suddenly decide the European Commission is elected through this uh, process of the European Parliament. So my, my view is very clear. I think it's for others to make their view clear. If you are for reform, then you need to stand up and fight for reform. If you are against transferring power from the European Council to the European Parliament, if you're against that, you have to stand up and say so. I'm very clear, be completely wrong, because this is an issue of principle, to suddenly turn around and say, well, it's all right for this election to, to lead to uh, a particular person to run the European Commission. I just think that's wrong, and I will go on thinking it's wrong uh, right up until the end. Clear answer, I think you'll find that one. European leaders are expected to hold talks on the European Commission leadership at the European Council meeting on June 26 and June 27 in Brussels. Iraq has asked the United States to carry out airstrikes on Sunni jihadists who attacked the country's main oil refinery and seized more territory in the north. The appeal came as fighters from the Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant were pressing a week-long offensive that has brought them close to the capital, and as Prime Minister Nouri al-Maliki pledging to face down ter terrorism. The United States spent millions of dollars over several years training and arming a new Iraqi army after disbanding the Sunni-led force created by the late dictator Saddam Hussein. Washington has already deployed an aircraft carrier to the Gulf and sent Marines to bolster security at its embassy in Baghdad. President Barack Obama has insisted a return to combat in Iraq for U.S. soldiers and is not on the cards. However, Secretary of State John Kerry has said drone strikes could be used. To end Court TV primetime news, a quick reminder of our top stories. 
frontline businessman and Islamic religious leader Abdulaziz Arishikola has died at the age of 69. We also told you Nigeria police announced plans to close all borders in Ekata State by 6 p.m. on Thursday ahead weekend governorship hall. And that's been the show. Thanks for watching. On behalf of the crew member, I am Nifemi Oguntoye. Thanks for being there.